And I just talked about hard bottom. Again, have the, the waypoints. The, the lat longs I put in later after the trip. I kind of do a, a little summary and I'll put in the, the lat long so I have a record on my logbook and also I download this into a computer. <coughs> and then just basic general information. That's, it's, that was in the beginning. Um, I have two logbooks. This is uh, the first one on this particular logbook. What I've since kind of developed is just a basic start on my logbook and I'll cover specific information, the date always, because I cross-reference all my trips using dates. If I want to go fishing in October, I can look through successive years in October and see how the bite was and water temperature and things like that. Location, that's obvious. Just as a memory, who I fished with, I'll put the high and the low tides in its range in parentheses. I'm kind of angle about temperatures. I think water temperatures are key for grouper fishing. And I'll also list the moon phase and the mile into my trip that helps me calculate my miles per gallon, the conditions of the day. And then here I do my waypoints. And I do these as I fish. It's kind of hard to do, but you, you have to kind of force yourself to do it. But over the years, you'll be glad that you did. So I'll, when I save a waypoint, I'll put the waypoint number there. And then I'll, in the, I have a comment area to the right. And I'll list general terms like the depth, the relief height, if it was uh, some qualifications like a ledge, a rock, if it's undercut, uh, annotations like these or sweet, meaning there's like a hierarchy of the numbers that I find, and I'll concentrate on those. And then later, when I return and I kind of, if you will, like debrief, I will add, go to this area where I'm taking all the lat longs, or rather, excuse me, all the waypoints, and then I write them down for my GPS unit the lat longs and I leave them right there and I have a written record of that. And then I'll also do a trip summary, what worked, what spots had fish, what didn't, that kind of thing. And then in the end I'll put boat information. At the end of the day I fill up my boat and that helps me kind of gauge how much fuel I have and if I had a certain motor that was stumbling or something like that. Those are where I make those annotations there. This is my last trip that I took. Uh, this is kind of messy. You have to realize these are these are all while I'm running, you know, finding these numbers. So it's kind of messy. Uh, it seems not organized at first. This was on Father's Day. This was with Casey, my eight-year-old son, in June 17th. These are water temperatures at 22 feet. It was 81.3, 35 feet, 8.6, 50 feet, 79.8, and it just gives me information. And later on in the year, when the temperatures are extreme, like in the winter time, mm -hmm. 55 degrees shuts down the river bite, anything below that. So the deeper you go in the winter time, generally the water is warmer, and generally the bite is going to be better. So when you put all these loose parts together, they kind of cohese into uh, some good information. Uh, in this particular trip, we were going out to 78 feet. We started off at a pinner spot. I also have little annotations that that waypoints like this are just numbers. Those are unproven waypoints. But once I put a square on things, that gives it a quality, and I know that that was a number that I can count on. So throughout my logbook, you can see these kind of, uh, I cross out the waypoint, and then I name it. And that name is kind of descriptive, and I kind of have a what that particular spot was about. So we were going to 78 feet, and all of a sudden, at 55 feet, <laughs> We ran across a really nice spot, and it was well, it was big enough, significant enough to turn back around. And then all of a sudden, we start marking really good spots, and I'm doing the waypoints because in the summertime, midsummer, you don't get, you don't see that clear water, you don't see those patch reefs. Same thing for the winter time. So if you're trolling in an area and you don't have all these waypoints, you're blind. You're hoping that you're going to cover some hard bottom, but you may not. So this is the time of the year to do that. So I have all these waypoints. And not all these waypoints are going to be, are going to have fruit on. There's hard bottom, and the hard bottom has black sea bass and, you know, or no grouper. So you just avoid that spot next time or just ride it out of your book itself. So in this case, uh, we, we started fishing some numbers and we were catching some fish. You know, another indication was 200 yards away we had a commercial grouper boat pull off the front of us. So, I mean, that's, that's a big flag right there, or red flag that, that there's some potential there. So this was just as I was going, and then we ran into more numbers, so we, so we flipped over, I'm sorry, to the other page, and 
this is again you can see the information the tides there the numbers and I'm starting to quantify the fishing here for instance this was an awesome spot and we just found these running 25 miles an hour you know in this particular spot it was uh, we caught 12 legal red groupers there in a short and so it got the name fire truck 13. well I'm never going to forget that number so kind of a descriptive qualifier for that number so, and then here is my summary what worked what didn't work um, you know the story behind low rod and uh, kind of just that's how I write my waypoints that I say into my blog book. So I should move on real quickly to a float plan. I think float plan is a very serious thing that you want to do when you go offshore. It's the key to your safety and it's a peace of mind. You know if you have a problem you've left this plan behind and my wife has this plan and it has information on there that she doesn't have to track down to call the authorities in a time of stress. So I have these log, these uh, flow plans, and I every time I leave, I put it out on the counter, and I have written on them with little stickies, and I'll show you an example of one, where I'm going and who's with me. There's also this the flow plan I'm going to show you at the, our website here under the GOFC library, if you want to copy that as well. So this is my flow plan. Uh, it's got a lot of information about my boat, about my equipment, about my heat curve, about my vehicle at the ramp. So it has a lot of information and phone numbers that my wife can call. So it's, it just kind of cuts down on it. And again, there's a copy on the website as well. So pretty much you need to get in the habit if you're offshore. You can keep an inshore logbook as well. Get in the habit of keeping good records because years later you're going to be glad that you did. That's it on my point. Any questions afterwards, I'd be happy to hear.